Hey guys, let's do some multiplayer in the hip. So this is the Persian Gulf at War server. It's basically a, a dynamic PvE campaign hosted by the Hoggett community. You can log on here and do just about anything. You can get in a Tomcat and shoot down enemy planes, or get in a Hornet and shoot down or blow up radar installations, or hop in a Harrier and blow up trucks and buildings on the ground, or get in a helicopter or one of the unarmed jet trainers and go capture airfields for the blue team. So what we're looking at here is a live map that you can load up in your browser that shows kind of the real-time state of the mission and how it's going so far. When this first begins, Blue Team is limited to right here, Aldafra Air Base, and that's it. That's all they own on the entire map aside from the carrier, the super carrier out here and the old carrier here. And then we kind of, the goal is to sort of work your way up along the peninsula taking out all the different ground units that are defending the different airfields and key locations and farps uh, and capture the airfields as you go turn them blue make your way up to the tip of the peninsula once you've captured everything here then we work our way across to Kesham Island and then finally up to Bandar Abbas and once we own Bandar Abbas then the mission is successful and it resets back to its initial state back here at Al Dafra. so you can log on to this pretty much anytime you want and fly pretty much any plane you want. If I get rid of this window now, you look in the role select, there's everything. There's A-10s and Harriers, C-101s, Tomcats, Vipers, F-5s, Hornets, Gazelles, Jeffs, Mirage, everything. Everything's here that you might want to fly. You just kind of jump into one and away you go. So what we're going to do is some logistics. So we're going to hop into a Mi-8 fly. I'm going to bring up the map again and show you what our goal is here. So if we come down here to Aldafra, all right, so we are down here at Aldafra and you'll actually see a little helicopter icon appear here momentarily once uh, the web GCI has figured out that I've spawned. There it is. And we're going to head up to these three airfields just up here. So Albatin, Sassel Nakheel, and Abu Dhabi. And they're currently owned by Red, as you can see, but there are no ground units there, which means they're available for capture. All we need to do is deliver one, at least one, blue ground unit to those places, and DCS will capture and change the ownership of that to blue. So we get some advantages out of it, including uh, allowing our planes to land, rearm, and refuel there. That prevents the enemy from spawning units there, and as we capture enough of them, it will move our tankers up to a forward position. You can see them kind of flying around down here right now. So it has some advantages, and these are nice and close, so we're going to go capture um, all three of those today. So let's get our helicopter started, and we'll be right back. All right, so we've got our helicopter all started up here. Um, we're gonna do several things in this video. I'm gonna gloss over some of them. We'll do more detailed videos on them in the future, but I have had a few requests from people to do sort of a put it all together kind of video and let's talk about you know more things and show more than just one thing at a time. So we're gonna do a little bit of that today. So once we get our helicopter started up, I wanna make a couple of recommendations for multiplayer stuff. Uh, because I jump out here, because you can see we have the IR suppressors, the hard points, and the extra armor on, it's an especially good idea to defuel your helicopter. You don't really need all that extra weight. Uh, depending on where you're going, 60% will be plenty for pretty much anything. I'm actually going to go a little lower than that. I'll go to half. Um, start with that. I don't have any weapons on board. I'm not going to be doing any combat here. I'm just going to go capture some airfields. Um, okay, so a couple other things for power. You want to make sure, especially on Persian Gulf, that your anti-icing is off, so we can, you know, turn that off completely. We don't need it on. And make sure that your dust protection is not on unless you figure you're going to need it, because it does drain power from the engines, possibly. Now, the first thing we need to do is uh, go pick up some crates. And there's a logistics site, if we look out our right window... Anywhere we see that green smoke, that means there's a logistics site there. We can go and spawn crates and then load them and then take them wherever we want on the map to unload and uh, unpack them. So let's just uh, pick up and head over there.
All right, so you don't have to be right next to the site. You just kind of have to be somewhere nearby. Once you're in the area, you can open up your communications menu and then hit F10. That's other up here. And then in there, you'll find under F6 is CTLD. This is the cargo loading script. Um, sling loading doesn't really work well online. It lags out and desyncs and just isn't good generally. So instead, what we have is this sort of um, scripting workaround that allows us to load cargo or simulate loading cargo, even though we're not actually going to sling load it. So we go in there, and then we'll get a bunch of different categories of things that we can load. Now, in the HIP and the Huey, we can load one set of troops and one crate at the same time. In the Gazelle, you can only load troops, and in the Trainer Jets, you can only load a crate, no troops. I know, a little confusing, but the menus will either appear or disappear, depending on what you can and can't load. So let's first of all go into Troop Transport, and then we have a few choices. Standard Group, Anti-Air, Anti-Tank, Mortar Squad. It, it depends on what you're doing. You might want to change it up if you're going to drop a few different groups. For Base Capture, it doesn't really matter. I tend to take the Anti-Air or the Man Pads. So we're going to hit F4 here for Load Anti-Air. And then it'll give me a message saying I've loaded some troops. This is kind of the sad thing about the state of ground units in DCS, is you don't really interact with them very well, that you don't see them come run up and get in or anything, and they're not actually sitting in the back. If you look back there, it just tells you that you've loaded them, and that's kind of that. If we go back into that menu, into F10, and then into F6 for CTLD. Now we can grab a crate as well, and this one's slightly different. So if we go into, say, anti-air crates... Actually, let's go into ground forces here. We'll go in there. We could pick up, say, a JTAC or a tow Humvee or an ammo truck. We're just going to bring in uh, a tow Humvee there. And it'll say crate weighing 500 kilograms has been brought out and is right here. And so it's this thing here. And then to pick it up, all we do is just hover over it and it'll load it up into our helicopter. So let's do that. Now, it's pretty windy. I'm trying to get faced into the wind here. or pretty close to it. All right, now as you get over over top of the crate, you'll get messages talking about um, whether you're in the right place, whether you're too high or too low, and then how long you need to hold that hover before you pick up the crate. So as we kind of make our way over there, and you don't have to be very precise. You can be wobbling all over pretty much as long as you're kind of over top of it. So once we get there, it'll say hovering over the crate, hover for three, two, one and loaded. If you get too low, it'll tell you you're too low. If you get too high, it'll tell you you're too high. So we're just going to set ourselves back down. All right. Now the next thing is we've got our crate, we've got our troops. We could capture two separate airfields with these, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop the troops at one and the crate at another and then we'll pick up more crates after that. Uh, but the next thing is, now that we have our um, armament, we have our fuel, everything's all set up, we've got our crates and our troops, we need to navigate. So let's jump over to the right side with two in the keyboard. And we've got the NS430 GPS nav unit ready to go. So you power it on just by rotating this knob here. And then it'll turn on, you'll hit enter a couple of times, message a couple of times, and you'll be left sitting here. So let's, um, we actually, don't need to do much of anything here. We're just going to hit this direct to button. Now you're going to need to know the uh, designation for the airfield. You can get this from the F10 map if you just load up the mission editor and click on airfields, or you can Google it or whatever you want to do. There's also kneeboard pages, I think, available for the HIP that are for any airframe that have all of those designations for the maps. Um, but what we need is Oscar Mike Alpha Delta. That's Albatine. So if we rotate the inner knob here, we'll cycle through letters. We'll go find O, and then the outer knob rotates through positions. So, Oscar, Mike, Alpha, Delta. And that gives us Albatine. And then we hit Enter and Enter. Now this will give us uh, a direct course to Oscar, Mike, Alpha, Delta. Albatine. So 335 is our bearing. Our distance is 11.7 nautical miles. And if we hit message here, it's because it's flashing. It'll tell us set course to 335. So we can do that. We can bring this down to 335. And we'll do the same thing on the left side. And then we basically just fly that heading until we get there. Now, a couple of things to note. The triangle is our current 
um, the current direction we're pointing, and this little sort of almost invisible rectangle that you see right on top of it is going to tell us which way we need to turn to line up with our path from the current position to Albertine. Now, what I mean is this is not going to point us at Albertine from wherever we are as we fly. It's going to try to direct us to the direct line from where we are right now when we activated it to where we're going. If I open F10, I can show you that. So we are, we are down right here and we are going up to here. So it's going to give us steering along this line. Now, if we fly, you know, a few miles off this way, it's not going to give us a new line that takes us directly to our destination. It's going to take us back here to get us to follow this course. We can update it anytime we want just by hitting the direct to button again, and hitting enter a couple of times. But if we get off course, it's going to try to bring us back to this line all the time. Just a little point of clarification. All right, so we are ready to go. If we check our web GCI here, we can see that we are still at Aldafra and these three airfields are still not captured. So we're heading to Albatine up here first and then we'll go over here and then we can pick up another set of crates and troops here and then we'll head over to Abu Dhabi finally. All right, so now that we've got our navigation laid in, we've got our cargo on board, our helicopters configured, everything's ready to go. The last part of this is communication. We are at a control, well, sometimes controlled, mostly uncontrolled airfield. There are other players around. It's often fairly busy here because this is the main spawn, although I think right now everybody's pretty far north. Um, but it's, it's very important for us to make sure we let other players know what we're up to so that we don't cause collisions and other issues. So this server utilizes and requires simple radio standalone, or SRS. Now you are required to have it installed. Uh, you won't be able to slot into any of the aircraft unless it's connected. But you're, you can't be forced to use it. You're basically just strongly encouraged to use it. So if we look at our radio down here, we're currently tuned to 249.5. That's the ground comms traffic. You'll find that in the briefing for the mission. The other one we care a lot about is 253.0, that's general comms. And then there's a few other ones, and we're going to look at one once we get up in the air that is pretty useful. Um, you don't need to know any specific comms. You don't need to know the actual technically correct way to announce your intentions or anything like that. Basically, you just need to remember three things. Where are you? Who are you? And what are you doing? That's it. If you can tell people where you are, who you are, and what you're doing they're going to be happy. It doesn't matter if you are using the correct language and verbiage or not, just so long as you're communicating. So we're going to call Aldafra traffic. That's where we are. And we're going to let them know who we are. That's mail truck one, one. And we're going to tell them what we're doing. We're taking off from the logistics area and we're headed west. And then at the end, we'll repeat where we are just in case people who weren't listening or didn't catch it at the beginning, um, know where we are and aren't wondering if they're talking about our airfield or their airfield or somewhere else they don't have to worry about. All right, so we can bring up our SRS overlay with left control, left shift, and escape. And if we press it again, we'll cycle through different display modes. We'll bring this one up for visibility. Now, if we look at this line in the middle, R863 is our primary VHF UHF radio. 249.5 is our frequency. 60% is our volume, 7 is the number of people on the channel, and asterisk is uh, an indication that this is our active radio, so that if we hit our activation key for SRS, this is the radio we'll transmit on. So let's do that now. Aldafra traffic, mail truck 11, taking off from logistics site, westbound departure, Aldafra. So I announce where I am, who I am, what I'm doing, and finally where I am again. So we can close that, we'll leave it on that channel for now, and we'll change it once we're kind of out of the airspace. So let's get ourselves up in the air. A little windy. And we're just gonna try to stay south of the runway here. Because we don't want to cross over it and then you know get hit by a jet that's trying to take off or land. And not everybody uses comms, you will notice that there are you know, a number of people who might enter it in the chat or just won't say anything at all. So you do, 
if you're using the runways and the taxiways, need to pay attention. Open your F-10 map, look around, see if there's anyone that's just unannounced coming in or leaving, and try to give them the right away because otherwise they're probably not paying attention to you and they're not listening to you. So they're going to do as they please. If you do the same thing, then bad things will happen. So pay attention to who else is around. All right, so once we get past the runway here, we'll kind of turn onto our course and then line ourselves back up. We'll head over to Albatine. Now, you can do other comms here, like you can announce that you are leaving the airspace and that you're changing frequencies so that people know. Eh, it, it's really up to you. It's kind of the nice thing about this server is the expectations are pretty minimal. Nobody is expecting you to be a professional or to be perfect or to know everything. They're just expecting you to communicate. That's about it. Um, if you want to go, you know, full on um, textbook procedure, go for it. People kind of enjoy that. It's fun listening to people who really know what they're talking about on the comms. But it's also just fine if you don't and nobody's going to give you crap for that. So don't worry about it. So we're going to get ourselves on course. We're going to line up that uh, box there. We need to come right just a little still to be on the original course that I showed you in the F-10 map. And then we'll be coming left a little bit to line up with our original heading there of 335. While we do that, I'm going to get myself trimmed here so I can kind of let go a little. There, once we're reasonably happy with that, we can look over here. We're going to tune to 136.0. This is a fun frequency. There is something on this frequency called Overlord Bot. Overlord Bot is uh, created by the community. Um, Ruroni Jones, I'm probably butchering the name, Dolt12, is the author. And he's created this bot that sort of replaces the in-game AWACS. It gives you information about where targets are. You can ask for a bogey dope and it'll give you that information. Or you can also have it set up a warning perimeter, which I think is really cool. And it'll tell you if anything gets within a certain radius of your current position. So let's contact it and see if it can recognize us. Overlord, mail truck 1-1, one, one, radio check. Mail truck 1-1, one, one, overlord, 5 by 5 There we go. So now we can ask for bogey dope and it'll give us directions to nearest targets. But we have no guns. We have nothing to shoot. We're not going to shoot anything down. We're just looking to get a warning if something's coming our way. So, Overlord, Mail Truck 1 1, set perimeter 30 miles. Mail Truck 1 1, Overlord, warning, set for 30 miles. And there we go. So now, if anything gets within 30 miles of our position, we'll get a warning from Overlord along with a bra so that we can, you know, get down to cover or to turn around or whatever we need to do. Uh, it gives us a nice heads up that there's something in the area. So I like to sit on this channel and monitor 136 and just kind of listen for Overlord Bot. The big downside in the hip is even with your other radios on, so if we turn on the R828 here, we can tune this to a number of different presets, but we can't tune it to 2495, the ground comms, or 253, the general comms, or almost any other useful uh, channel. Basically what we can put it on for channel seven, for example, is 30.0, which is um, the default channel for A-10 interflight. So at least there are usually a few people on that channel. You can use it to talk to other uh, helicopters that are in the area, if you can get them to tune to the same channel, but it's not super useful. So you can't have Overlord Bot and general comms or ground comms at the same time. You you basically only got one radio that can do any of those channels. So that's kind of disappointing. It's a whole lot nicer in, say, the C-101, where you've got a VHF and a UHF radio, so you can put 136 in your VHF and then uh, 253, the general comms, on your UHF. I quite like that. And then you can listen for warnings, but also be able to talk to people. So anyway, we are coming up on our destination, our first airfield right up here. And uh, I should point out at this point here, this will give us a real-time distance to our designation or to our destination, so about five miles, and it'll give us an ETE or estimated time. 
um, of arrival here, our ETA. And it'll give us our bearing and everything else we need, but this estimated time of arrival here is super useful when there's a human GCI online. So sometimes you'll find on channel 134, there'll be a person playing the role of AWACS. Uh, they'll be guiding people around to different targets. And if you work with them, you can tell them that you're you know, heading north to capture Kasab, and your ETA is 17 minutes. And then they know when they need to have cap in the area and keep the skies clear, and you can give them accurate updates of how far out you are. That is fantastic to know. It helps you. It helps them. It's great info. So I love that about the GPS nav. So there's someone else trying to use Overlord bot. Alright, so let's start our descent here into Albatine. Now, we could fly proper patterns. I could come in and do a teardrop, or I could go and do a wide box, or a narrow box, whatever I want to do for a pattern. But typically with this stuff, again, it's kind of at your discretion. There's no expectations. You're not expected to follow real patterns if you don't want to. You're more than welcome to. Um, but I find that for a lot of these, it's just simpler to just come straight in, put down, and drop your crates. Especially because this is not a blue airfield, this is still technically a red airfield. Really, there shouldn't be a reason um, to do full patterns here because it's not our airfield. Our goal here is to get in quickly, capture the airfield, and move on. But, again, up to you. You can do what you want. That's kind of the great thing about this server is it gives you stuff to do, a reason to do it, but then no serious expectations for your skill level. So we're coming in here, watching our speed. Generally, you want uh, to maintain at least 20 kph more than your altitude. So at an altitude of 100 meters, you'd want to have at least 120 kph. Which uh, we are doing actually quite nicely right now. I'm uh, pleased about that. Usually pretty terrible at that. But we're going to add some power here and then try to maintain around 120 until we get a bit closer to the ground. And then we'll try to set down somewhere in the 50 kilometer per hour range or below. You can come in a lot faster. The hip has wheels. It'll land just fine as long as your uh, descent rate is low enough. Adding a little more collective here because I don't need to set down just yet. I want to arrest that rate of descent. And I kind of want to be somewhere near the middle of the um, airstrip, of the runway. So there's a marker. If you look at the F-10 map for airfields that we own or that are neutral, there'll be a little marker right in the middle of the runway. And that's kind of the center of the airfield's sphere of influence. When we drop our units here, they have to be within that sphere. It's about two miles around the center point. So just for good measure, I try to get you know, not right at the very edge of the airfield, but somewhere closer to the middle. I'm just gonna come down. We're gonna set down just a little fast here, but that's okay. About 55 kph, and we are already stopped, so nice and easy. Reset our trim once we're on the ground, and then we're gonna get off the runway. Now, something to consider here is when we drop our unit, it's gonna appear directly in front of us. If I drop it here, it's on the runway, it's on the tarmac still, and somebody could potentially hit it if they came down and landed a little bit crooked. So, as a general rule of thumb or good practice, what I like to do is turn my nose, point into the dirt where nobody's going to be driving realistically, the brake on, and then right, open our menu, F10 for other, F6 for CTLD. Now to drop troops, we can Troops are going to appear around us in a big circle, whereas our ground unit, if we drop that one, will appear directly in front of us. So we'll do the troops later. Um, we're not in a good position for that now. So we hit F6 for CTLD commands, and then drop crate on F2. That puts our crate down there. 
and then we go back in F10, F6 for CTLD, F6 again for CTLD commands, and then F1 for unpack any crate. And there we go. We have dropped and unpacked our Humvee to the field. Now let's open up uh, F10, find where we are. So here's that little marker I was talking about right in the center of the airfield. It's not showing us the sphere of influence now, but that's fine. Uh, it's, you know, about the length of the runway around. And if we look at the coalition, it says blue, which means we've captured it successfully. That's awesome. And now we're good to move on to our next one. And that's just over here at Sassel Nikhil. All right, so we could do uh, GPS nav again. I actually probably will. But the other thing we could do is just, you know, get a heading, head over here about you know 071 we could just put that in as our course select and they're so close three miles that we could very easily get ourselves over there but for the sake of it of showing you something else in this let's uh clear that now if we just cycle the outer wheel we'll get into a nearest and this will show us airfields that are nearby so here's where we are now Oscar Mike Alpha Delta, that's Albatine. And then right here, Oscar Mike November Kilo, that's Sassal Nikhil. And if we push, it'll start flashing. And then we can scroll the outer wheel to change the target or selection. Scroll it until we're hovering or flashing on the one we want. And then we can press this direct to button again. So now it'll bring up that one, Sassal Nikhil, and we hit enter, enter, and now we have directions there. So three miles bearing is 6-6, six, six. so then we could set our course again, just like that, and then we fly that course for three miles. So that's pretty much it, like there are some pretty easy ways to get navigation instructions to your next destination. So let's, uh, let's go pick up and go land over there. Now, technically, because this is a blue airfield, I guess we should be calling comms and observing good practices, but since we just captured it and there's nobody else here, and we can verify that by looking at our uh, F10 map or, um, or the WebGCI, eh. Kind of demonstrating what I mean by there aren't high expectations of you you're free to kind of do things your own way so long as you're communicating with other players. As long as you're uh, checking to see if people are, are around, and if they are, you're letting them know what you're up to. So we're just following this course. You know, a minute and a half out, we're really close. We can already see our logistics site up ahead. Uh, due to constant issues with server lag, the admins have been trying various things, trying to figure out what they can do to make things better. One of the things that they've tried is not having the logistics site spawn when you capture the airfield, just making it active all the time. So normally we wouldn't see that green smoke until we cap the airfield and it turns blue. But because of what they're trying right now, we can see it all the time so we know it's there. So let's watch these power lines. Now we are going to go around a little bit and come in from the other way because there's a pretty strong wind down here. I don't really want to land with a big tailwind. So we'll uh, circle around here. We'll come over these light poles and then we'll set down near the green smoke. Actually, that reminds me of something I should mention. If you drop troops too close to a logistics site, it just returns them to the base. It doesn't actually deploy them on the airfield, and you won't get a capture. So on second thought, let's go put them out here in the dirt. A little bumpy, but we're down. So we open up our comms menu, go to F10 for other, F6 for CTLD, 
And then here we go into the troop transport menu, this time F1, and then F1 again to unload and extract troops. And then they appear all around us, so jump out. And they appear in a circle around us, so if you just sit on the edge of the runway and deploy them, they're going to appear on the runway and they're going to get run over and killed. There we go, they are on the ground now, and if we hit F10, now we have the little marker for Sasa on the keel, and we can see that it's blue, which means we've capped it successfully. That's awesome. Now the nice thing is, you might have noticed there was no logistics site down here at Albatine, but there is one at Sasa on the keel. So by capturing here and then here, we're empty, and now we can reload at the logistics site at Sasa on the keel and head up to Abu Dhabi. All right, so back at the logistics site, let's uh, go into F10, F6, or CTLD. We'll pick up another ground forces, and we'll do this time an ammo truck on F5. So it doesn't really matter what you pick up, just uh, make sure it's something that you don't need more than one crate for. So if I go and open that menu again, I go into CTLD and then F4 for ground forces. All of them are just the name of the unit, except for the M1A1 Abrams tank. It's got a 2 next to it. That means you need two of these crates <clears throat> spawned, picked up and moved, put down together and unloaded, and then you unpack them once, once you have both crates together in the same area, and it'll turn them into one tank. So if you just pick up one of those and go and drop it somewhere, you won't be able to unpack it alone. It'll just give you an error and say you need to have at least, uh, you need to have two of this type of crate before you can unpack it. So don't take one of those if all you're doing is just trying to capture an airfield, unless you've got a friend and you really want to capture it with a tank, which is cool, by the way. So let's go hover over this. There we go, and we'll just kind of make our way over to the crate. Now this time it's going to tell us we're too low. So we've got to come up. Now it'll start the countdown. And if we continue climbing, it'll tell us we're too high. There we go, we've loaded. Now we haven't set our navigation yet. So we're just gonna set ourselves right back down. We're gonna end up taking off with a tailwind. Alright, so let's show one more way here to do some navigation using the NS430. Now, I believe it's from the nav screen. So when you scroll the outer wheel, you'll cycle through different categories. And then when you scroll the inner wheel, you'll cycle through pages within that category. We want the second page here, which gives us our moving map. And then because we've got quite a big range here, we're going to reduce the range with the range down until we can see the airfields we want. So there's Aldafro where we started, Albatine cap first, um, Sass on the keel where we are now, and over here is Abu Dhabi where we're going. Now if we push on the button, we get a cursor, and we can move this cursor around to select airfields. So you scroll the inner wheel to go up and down, and you scroll the outer wheel to go left and right. Put the cursor over top of the airfield you want, you'll see it reflected up here, and then just again press your direct to button. So now we'll get uh, Oscar Mike Alpha Alpha for Abu Dhabi, and then we hit enter, and enter. The message will tell us at course 79, and that's it. That's really all there is to it. So we go there, which is basically the direction we're heading. It's only seven and a half nautical miles, and let's head out there.
Now I'm going to do something kind of stupid and I'm going to fly in between these poles. The hip has very large rotor blades and it is very easy to strike these if you're not right in the middle. I've done it far too many times. I know better than to fly between these. But if you take it slow, you'll be okay. Crossing the runway again without announcing our intentions because, you know, we're, uh, we're bad. But I've got the uh, WebGCI up on my second monitor so I can see pretty easily that there's nobody in the area. And because we just capped it, I'm not super worried about it. Also, these three airfields don't see a lot of usage because Eldafra is so close. People tend to just go land there. But these three are nice and close, which makes for uh, a an easier time showing you how the process works, how logistics works. So again, we can see that green smoke just up there. When you can't see it... I think he's on the wrong channel. Well, I don't think there's anything around everything. All the action's kind of further north up the peninsula, so we're just going to trim here. We'll uh, switch over to general comms and see if we get any. Why am I? Oh, I'm hearing him on RA28, that's why. I'm hearing him on my secondary radio on channel 30. I'm just going to turn that off. So in, uh, in SRS you can set up the different radios to have different audio split and you can set them to come out of different ears and right now I have them both coming out of the left ear and what I need to do is switch them so that one of them is in the right ear and one's in the left and then I know which radio I'm hearing just by which ear I hear it out of. So you'll notice that if you've been listening with headphones that all the radio comms have been coming out of the left ear. Just realized that blister window was open. I've been flying with it open the whole time. Now it's a little quieter in here. Hopefully you've been able to hear me the whole time. Alright, so Abu Dhabi is a little bit misleading and challenging. If I bring up the F-10 map... So both of these ones, they've got one runway and a little marker right in the middle. Uh, if we look at Aldafra, the marker is up on this runway, and this runway is um, not marked. And so you can actually get outside the sphere of influence on this runway if you were to drop over here, and it wouldn't count. Making sure I'm not going to crash. Um, Abu Dhabi works the same way. It's got two runways, and the marker is on the northern one up here. So if you happen to drop your troops somewhere down here or down here, you might not be within the range, the sphere of influence for this airfield because the marker is up here. And it won't count. You'll drop your troops and nothing will happen. So that's no good. Um, and to make it worse, look where the logistics site is. It's way down here at the south end. And so people tend to come down, they land over there by the logistics site, they drop their cargo, but it doesn't cap the airfield and then they don't know why. You actually need to drop it up there somewhere. So let's go do that. Practically gonna auto-rotate our way down here now. Which is actually easier on the helicopter because you don't have all the torque stress from the main engines and transmission. You're just letting air and gravity do the work of turning the, um, turning the blades. The rotor disc, I should say. All right, so we're gonna slow that descent just a little. Still the same idea, you wanna try to keep um, more airspeed than altitude, which I'm not doing right now. I'm coming in quite steep. But we're uh, correcting for that. As we come down, altitude's coming down, we're holding a constant speed, and now we'll start to bleed off our speed again. A 
Watch our rate of descent. Three meters per second is a little high. We want to touch down at one or less. Especially as we uh, lose effective translation to lift. We really want to watch that rate of descent. We can kind of level out the nose a bit here and set down. Nice and smooth. Now let's uh, first of all take a look at whereabouts we are. I'm just going to stop and then we'll pull up F10. So the sphere of influence for this airfield is going to be somewhere around here as the center point and it's going to come out this far in all directions, roughly. So we should be fine as long as we're on the taxiway in between them, but over here it's pretty easy to be out of range. So we're going to drop it here and see if we get the capture. So we go open our comms menu, F10, F6 for CTLD, F6 for CTLD commands, and then we drop our crate with F2. And again, F10, F6, F6, and then F1 to unpack. There we go, we've deployed an ammo truck. And there's our marker, Abu Dhabi International Airport, and our coalition is blue. So we were close enough. We did manage to capture the airfield there, so that's great. Now if we pull up our web GCI, get my cursor to the right place. There, so where we started was down here at Al Dafra, and then we captured Al Batin, Sas Al Nikhil, and Abu Dhabi. So that's great. Now if we zoom out and have a look at sort of the overall picture, we own every airfield on the peninsula now. So all of these four here, Al Ain, all the ones up along the coast, all the way up to Kassab, which is currently neutral, and somebody's gonna have to come in there and capture Kassab. And then we'll move up to Kesham Island. And there's a FARP up here, and then finally Bandar Abbas will be the last objective. All right, so that's a quick look at logistics online multiplayer with the hip in sort of a non-combat uh, capacity. This is one of those sort of overlooked things that I really quite enjoy. I find it um, relaxing. It can be fairly stressful when you're up there in a Tomcat or something trying to constantly engage with bandits. You get shot down a lot. You do a lot of uh, flying all the way up from Al Dafra up to Kassab only to then, you know, get shot down or crash or do something stupid or whatever. And sometimes it's nice to kind of just relax a little bit and just do some flying around from one airfield to another and drop troops and capture them. It helps out the mission because we are required. We need helicopters and uh, trainers to come in and capture these airfields where we can't really progress the mission. And it's something that you can do that's kind of low stress and chill. So great way to spend some time if you're uh, looking for a little break or if you're looking for a reason to fly the helicopters online and you don't really want to do combat stuff. Or if you're looking for a reason to fly the unarmed planes like the TF-51 or the C-101, those are both fantastic and they're a bunch of fun. So. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that made sense. Um, we'll do some deep dives into some of the stuff we saw here today later on, especially the NS430 and SRS. Uh, and I'll catch you guys next time.